What is up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to my channel and today we are back with another episode of Freelander coming off our great performance in Terreno but it wasn't quite good enough to beat Primoz Roglic who looks invincible when he's in peak form. We came second in the GC to him and today we've got another exciting episode starting with Milan San Remo. Almost 300 kilometers to cover today in Milan San Remo, the first monument of the season. Of course, it is pretty flat though, uh, but we do have those final climbs, the Suppressor and the Poggio, which we will be sure to try and attack on. Peter Sagan looking for his first win at Milan San Remo, Wuvenert, Trentin and Van der Poel, the other favorites. And taking a look at our squad for the race, we are part of the team alongside Mikhail Kwiatkowski, Matej Mohorek is here, Sonny Colbrelli, probably the best sprinter, alongside Phil Bauhaus. Kevin Inkler joins the team as well as Matteo Pellucci. Here we go then, getting underway from Milan for our first monument of the season. And I think we're still in our fitness peak, so good to see a plus three day today for Mikel. Very good day for the team in general, actually. Uh, you can see Colbrelli on a plus three day, Mohorek on a plus four as well. And if we take a look at the strategy, we're an outsider alongside Kwiatkowski, Kolbrelli and Matej Mohoric. So no real out and out leader in the team. Will be very interesting to see how we play this going into the final. So as you can expect guys, we still have 55k to go. No real action so far in the race. Cruising along for 250k, but now the race is about to get serious. So you can see the breakaway have been caught and there are now attacks taking place in this group. Jasper Stoyven gone up the road. Van Marker and Mads Pedersen follow as well. I want to stay right towards the front here. Merlier is going to try and bring them in, but Stoyven has a bit of a gap as we approach the suppressor. So Stoyven has been caught just before the suppressor. I'm going to up this to 85. Let's try and come to the front of the Peloton. I don't think there will be any attacks on this climb. I will think about it, but I can't really attack if the pace stays like this. So look at the pace set on this climb by Quickstep and Lotto Sudal. Uh, you can see a lot of guys struggling with the pace at the moment. We need to try and come to the front as a lot of guys were blocked there. You can see a few of our guys in the team really struggling. I expect the same for the other teams as well. Van Der Poel is there. He's not attacking, I don't think. Uh, and look at how much everyone's energy is drained. We're not going to be able to attack on the suppressor. Let's wait for the Poggio. So the pace is very fast and as you can see, just 37 riders in the Peloton. My word, you rarely see this at Milan San Remo. A big split on the suppressor. Let's make sure we stay to the front of this group. Maybe we can have a chance. The race has suited us absolutely perfectly at the moment with the really fast pace. Um, let's get ready for the Poggio. So Phil Gilbert is setting an absolutely lightning pace on the front for Caleb Ewan, Dagen Kolb and the rest of the Lotto team. Who's been caught behind here? You can see Ackerman, Grunewagen, Pollitz and the rest of the guys in that group. We're now coming to the Poggio. Let's go to the front on 85 at least. We're getting blocked off for the moment and the pace, we just can't even attack at the moment with the current pace. Does slow somewhat here. Maybe this is our moment. Oh my word, do we attack right now? Van der Sander on the front. For Lotto, I think we have to. Let's try it. Mikhail lands up on the attack. Looks like the guys can stick with us for the moment. Let's try and continue. I don't think we're going to be able to get away though, sadly. Let's try and pace on 90 at the moment. Maybe sit up. Dane Kolb coming to the front. Oh my word, they are just too strong right here. Maybe we can stay to the front. Let's take Tunison's wheel. 6k to go in the race and just 28 riders right here. I think our only chance of victory now is to attack on this downhill. So 4k to go in the race. Looks like Garcia Cortina is trying to attack actually. Um, I might try and come to the front on 99. Can we try a little attack right here? Not sure where Colbrelli is and Mahorek there. A bit further back in the group. Let's make sure we follow Matteo Trentin with Landa because Garcia Cortina has attacked away. We're using everything to stay with Matteo Trentin right here. Let's try and sprint past these guys. We're not going to be able to take it. It's very, very close. Oh my word. I think we're going to finish in the top three here and I think it will be Garcia Cortina just taking the win. 
Trent in second. In the end, we're fourth. You and Piptus on the line. What a finish right there. What a race that was, guys. Milan, San Remo, not always one of the most animated of the monuments, but we get a top five on the day. The second best Spaniard and Ivan Garcia Cortina. What a season this guy is having, winning his first monument. Trenton was second, you and Piptus to third place. So following the very exciting start to today's episode, we go to Spain for the Volta Ciclista at Catalonia. Seven stages, some mountains, some hills, and some flat ones. Let's take a look at the stages. You can see, first one is a flat one despite some hills towards the beginning. Stage two, again, a flat one. Some very short hills, but I think that will be for the sprinters. Stage three, and it's the first GC day of the race. A massive climb, it gets very steep towards the top right there. Stage four then, and I think definitely the queen stage of the race. Look at this profile climbing all over um, and then going on to stage five, back to the flat ones for the sprinters. Stage six, more of a punchy stage with this hill towards the end. Stage seven, some short hills into Barcelona. Taking a look at our team for the race, we lead the squad alongside Peo Bilbao, one of our strongest domestiques. We've got Scott Davis, Kevin Inclar, Matej Mohoric, Doman Novak and Fred Wright. So definitely good to see some new names in here. I don't think we've ridden with Davis or Wright yet in this save. So we're underway here in Spain. Let's take a look at the start list for the race. You can see Alaphilippe leads quick step. Pogacar is here, a very dangerous rider of course, as well as Bernal, Carapaz and Froome for Ineos. Bookman leads Bora. We've got Miguel Angel Lopez for Ajitoire. We've got Adam Yates for his new team, NTT. You can see Chavez is here, David Godu, Mark Soler developing pretty nicely. Same with Dan Martinez, 77 Mountain for both of those guys. So another pretty strong start list at this race, but notice no Primoz Roglic for Jumbo Visma. So looking at this start list, I would highlight Tade Pogacar as one of our main rivals alongside Egan Bernal. Same with Emmanuel Bookman. I would say those three guys, the three big danger men in this one. So we're just coming to the final climb of the day. I'm gonna try and pace up here real fast, may as well. Uh, you can see a few guys already out the back. We may as well try and push as many riders out the back on this climb. You can see the breakaway coming apart with 20K to go. Of course, this means we will take these mountain points as well in the team. Let's pace on 99 on this downhill section. So you can see right here, we're really stretching this group out. And I think we've done it, 11 riders off the front. Unbelievable stuff. We will pace with both of these guys on I think 90. We'll just sit in the wheels now. Uh, Inkalar can try and protect us. We have five riders up the roads. Four of them are ours. Oh my word, these guys are gonna have to pace very hard to bring us in here. So Inkalar is pacing on 95, but you can see just 10 seconds, they have pretty much brought us in here. I think we may as well keep the pace going a little bit here with Bill Bao, but you can see this will be a mass sprint, I think. So 5K to go in the stage. You can see we did drop some riders and some sprinters in that, uh, in that group behind. Don't really think we have a out and out sprinter in the team here though. Bilbao can pace on 88 or maybe go up a bit to maybe 95. Try and come to the front into the final two and a half K. You can see Ackerman very well positioned. Same with Garcia Cortina, Bilbao putting us in a very good position as well. Let's try and grab some of these guys wheel sprint to the line. Pascal Ackerman looks good for the win. He will take it. Garcia Cortina in second. Restrepo in third, we will finish in the top 10. So a fun way to start the race for sure, that wasn't your standard sprint stage, but in the end, it was Pascal Ackerman taking the win. Nice top 10 for both us and Bill Bao. You can see we did create a gap much further down, no real riders in the GC down here though. Stage two is here and it's definitely one for the sprinters today, just 160 kilometers, and you can see Ackerman will be the hot favorite again alongside Garcia Cortina and Dagen Kolb. So again, we have 25K to go, still over a minute up to the breakaway and splits taking place. We didn't actually start this split, but as we're here, we may as well do some pacing. 
So just 5k to go in this one. I think Mahorik is pretty much done. And you can see just about 50 riders left in this group. Let's pace on 90 or 88 with Bilbao. Um, I'm not sure if this split will take place and I'm not even sure if any GC guys are there. Let's continue trying to pace though with 3k to go. 99 up this little hill with Bilbao. Mahorik, he can't hold our wheel any longer. 2k to go Bilbao, let's come down up to 99. Oh my word, what an attack by Kluger, will sprint. Now let's sprint with Lander into the final kilometer. Ackerman looks very, very good for this one. Dane Colburn, Garcia Cortina coming though. And Ivan Garcia Cortina holds on, takes the win ahead of Ackerman and Dane Kolb. We end in fourth place. Let's see who ends up in the front group here. So it's a repeat of Milan San Remo with Garcia Cortina in first and Landa in fourth place. Sadly, no real gaps in the group. To be fair, I did watch and they all came back together pretty much into one group across the line, although everyone was pretty much dead. Let's hope we've worn out some of the other GC guys today. Next up then, it's the first real GC day of the race. You can see we have a massive climb to conquer in this one. Emmanuel Bookman, Egan Bernal and Tadej Pogacar are the three favourites. We're fourth on this list. Let's hope we can at least get a top three though. Although saying that, I have just noticed our fitness peak has just finished. Bit of a shame, but with the Giro coming up, that is the main goal, of course. So guys, approaching the final climb, not too much action today just yet, it must be said. Let's try and move towards the front of the peloton. Uh, the breakaway have completely split up, but they do have six minutes at the front of the race. So 12k to go in the stage. I'm really doing my best to conserve our energy leading up to this final climb. It's just starting now though. So I'm gonna try and come to the front of this group on the right hand side of the roads. Everyone else in the team is pretty much done by the guys in this train, as you can see. Let's just go on 68, I think. Novak comes to the front of the peloton. Let's see what we can do today. So here we go then guys, 9k to go, movement already, Julian Alaphilippe on the attack, Martin, Godou and Lopez all follow, I'm just going to pace on like 82, we won't follow immediately and they're opening up a very big lead already, Mohoric can do his best to try and bring these guys in, a massive attack by Alaphilippe, Lopez can't even stay with those guys, oh my word. So Peo Bilbao will have to protect Mikhail Lanza now, 7k still to go in the stage, I think we will bring these guys in. And yes, we have just done it right there. Dan Martinez on the counter-attack now, it would seem. Uh, Martin, Mask, or do Adam Yates, they all try to follow. I mean, we still have Bill Bauer, so let's try and use him as much as possible. You can see the guys in the breakaway are getting caught, the final guys in that group. And just 26 riders now in this group. Bill Bauer is almost done with 6K to go now. So into the final 5k and Chris Froome comes to the front for Ineos. I guess that is for Egan Bernal. 19 riders now in this group as Soler looks done. Oh my word, this is crazy. A crazy day already. Just four and a half k to go. Froome setting a very, very fast pace. I'm not going to follow that wheel. Carapaz needs to take that wheel. Dan Martin looks done now with 4k to go. Let's stay on maintain position. 15k to go. Do I try something now with Lander? Froome still pacing on the front. Maybe not. I mean, Froome is still going. I thought he looked done, but he's still going. Carapaz and Bernal coming to the front now for Ineos. Let's go up to 85. They're just riding away from us right here. My words, look at the strength of Ineos. We're trying to stay with them with 3k to go. 10 riders in this group. Mass is done. We're riding away. Haig looks done. Carapaz looks done as well. I mean, I can't do the chasing by myself with 2k to go. We're looking very, very tired indeed. And it's Ineos looking absolutely dominant. Oh my word, Froome is leading Bernal out here. I'm going to have to rest on 70. I can't pace any longer. Looks like most of the guys in this group are done. I'm going to try a little attack actually with 1k to go. Doesn't look like we have the strength there. Let's go up to 90. Try and go like this to the line, but Egan Bernal is going to take a fantastic victory today. We can maybe go to 90 to the line. Egan Bernal and I think Froome are going to take a 1-2 for Ineos. We're going to finish in the next group down, I think. So Froome second, Bookman, Pogacar and Lander, I think will finish in the same group. 
My word, what a performance by Ineos. Egan Bernal wins by 57 seconds on stage three, ahead of his teammate Froome in seconds. Pogacar, Bookman and Lander in the same group behind. Lopez further down and everyone else over two minutes down. And you can see in the GC, Bernal leads by over a minute. And it looks like the guys I highlighted at the start of the race, Bernal, Pogacar and Bookman, look to be our main rivals, perhaps alongside Chris Froome. On to stage four then guys, it's a massive mountain stage again today, climbing throughout the stage and we end with two very big climbs as well. A chance to gain some time back, but I must say Egan Bernal looks unbeatable at the moment. As you see then guys, a big group of 23 riders up the roads in today's breakaway. You can see the riders here, we've got Chavez, Izaguirre, Flores, Hurt, Tolhoik, very strong group up the road. So now on the downhill section, as you can see, just 97 riders still in the peloton. I think we've done a pretty decent job reducing the numbers in this group. Still though, 19 riders at the front in the breakaway. So the pace suddenly erupts in this group with 5k to go in the climb. Mitchelton Scott and Ajitua are pacing really, really hard suddenly. Not trying to use much energy on this flatter section. It's going to go uphill towards the top. And I think, to be honest, most riders will be able to stay in this group over the peak of this climb. So Latour, Vendrame and Hananen pacing really, really hard. And I was wrong, to be fair. You can see 28 riders now in the peloton. Let's take position and try and conserve some energy on this downhill section. You can see the riders that have been dropped here. So the pace has been absolutely rapid in the peloton guys since the top of this final climb. You can see a lot of guys in the group are struggling towards the back, trying to conserve some energy before the climb, but we're coming into it now. Let's try and move up in this group. And I must say uh, that Miguel Angel Lopez is my favorite for today, the way that Ajitua are pacing here. So Pierre Latour doing an absolute job on the front for his leader. Just 27 riders now in this group. The breakaway desperately trying to stay ahead. I don't think they're going to be able to though. I think today is for the peloton. 10k to go in the stage then. Chris Froome leading the peloton second place man in the GC. I mean, look at this Ineos team. Four riders right here in the top 10. Um, you can see Mohoric is now done. He's out the back. We've only got Bill Bow and he's pretty cooked as well. Here we go then. There is the moment and it is Lopez on the attack as I anticipated. I don't really have the energy to follow that, to be honest. Let's just pace on 85. Make sure we at least stay with Egamba now. Bilbao is now done. As you can see, let's take position here on maybe 90. Just make sure we stay right here and look at how many riders have gone out the back right here. We're just about making sure we stay in this group. Lopez is now caught. Uh, the riders up the road on the attack again. Alaphilippe and Bernal go. Oh my words, I don't think we really have the energy to follow. Oh, this is not ideal at all. We're in a group with Froome, Carapaz, Haig and Mass, And we have to do the chasing here, really. Uh, you can see Alaphilippe looks pretty much done. Mass, Carapaz struggling as well. We've caught Alaphilippe, but we still have 5k to go. We've caught Bernal and Pogacar. Bookman and Lopez still up the road. Let's just sit in now. So 4k to go in the stage. Bookman and Lopez have attacked the leader, Bernal and Pogacar. Looks like Pogacar is now done. We're going to lean completely on Egan Bernal to do the chasing. He needs to protect his race leader's jersey, of course. I'm going to take his wheel as soon as we can, but we have no energy left to follow, to be honest. Two and a half K to go. The lead is 40 seconds and it is getting pretty close for Bernal. He needs to hunt them down right here. There you go, let's take Bernal's wheel. Uh, you can see it's Bookman attacking again. Bookman is one minute down in the GC and he's got that at the moment on the roads. Bernal is about to drop us here. I think we're gonna, uh, we're gonna come fifth on the stage. There you go, we have been dropped. Pogacar and Bernal trying to hunt down Emmanuel Bookman, but what a ride by Emmanuel Bookman up the road today. He celebrates, he's going to take the stage win. Is he going to get enough time for the GC victory though? This is so, so close. I think Bernal is just going to hold on here and we're going to cruise in for fifth place. What a ride today by the German Emmanuel Bookman 
taking a fantastic win, 30 seconds ahead of Lopez, but now close the gap to 44 seconds in the end. Pogacar fourth, we were well behind in fifth, but look at the gaps, massive gaps today, and that does put us in fifth place in the GC. I think we overtake Froome, uh, but Lopez overtook us as well. So after two action-packed mountain stages, we're back to the flat stages for the sprinters. You can see, again, Ackerman will be the favourite. Garcia Cortina, Dane Kolb, Van Avermaet and the rest also on the favourites list. So we have 13k to go in this one. Pacing very hard on the front is Lotto Suzal. But I must say, I do think the breakaway have this one in the bag. And Valgren is now attacking with 10k to go. They still have two and a half minutes on the peloton. So 7k to go in the stage. There is a split that has taken place with the pacing on the front. We may as well use our energy gel right here. Right can go down to 85. That should keep us right towards the front. No issues. And you can see Valgren has 30 seconds on the other riders in the breakaway. I think he might have it, you know. Uh, not sure the best camera to watch this action unfold. We could watch Valgren try and bring it home. You can see the guys in the breakaway trying to bring him in. He has one kilometer left. Can Valgren hold on? It's going to be close. Here come the rest of the breakaway. Valgren celebrates and he does hold on. What a victory for Michael Valgren. They'll finish about two minutes clear of the peloton in the end if we switch back. Let's put right up to 99. Let's sprint into the line. A very exciting finish in the breakaway today, it must be said. Uh, but of course, no change in the GC. This split did take place. So actually, Chris Froome did lose time. Uh, so let's take a look. Latour lost time. I assume none of the other GC leaders lost time. Can't see anyone. Adam Yates lost time. So maybe there were, maybe more gaps than I first thought. Godou's down here. Plenty of riders in this split. So in the GC, we do stay in fifth place because Pogachar, Lopez, Bookman and Bernal stay in the front group. Next up, guys, stage six, and it is a hilly stage. To be fair, this could be a chance of victory for us if we try a little attack on this downhill section of the climb. Obviously, we're a pretty good downhiller. Uh, so that could be our chance at victory because we won't have it in the sprint. Let's get into the stage. So we do have attacks up the road for the breakaway. Pale Bilbao has joined those attacks, but you can see 30 km an hour crosswinds at the moment. This could play a massive part in the stage later on. So you can see guys, we're approaching the final climb and we do have attacks. My word, Lopez, Alaphilippe on the attack here. Let's make sure Mohoric keeps us in a good position. You can see the breakaway just up the road right there. Uh, they have 1k to go to the top of the climb. One and a half minutes as well. We need to make sure we stay in this group. Alaphilippe on the counter attack, looking for the stage victory. Uh, Mohoric going to try and pace the man in. Of course, he's sixth in the GC, currently behind us. Uh, let's try and get him protecting us. Uh, actually, we can potentially follow Mohoric on this downhill section. Very, very good downhiller. Just 28 riders now in this group. Let's try and go on 99 with Mohoric. We can try and stay on his wheel. Uh, you can see the riders in this group. Can't see anyone strong that's gone out the back in the GC. But it looks like Alaphilippe in a very, very good position here. Um, I'm actually going to go down to 85 right here. Let's follow Chris Froome. Um, Alaphilippe, I don't think he has a chance at the stage. Potentially is going to go to the breakaway. And Bilbao got a very good chance. So Alaphilippe has been brought in. The victory today will be going to the breakaway, I believe. Although Alaphilippe on the counter attack here. My word, he will not give up today. Mohoric go up to 95. My word, this is very, very close. Let's try and go up to 99 with Mohoric. Make sure we stay towards the front and the breakaway getting brought in. Oh my word, Alaphilippe has caught the breakaway. Absolute drama taking place here. And I think Alaphilippe could have a chance at this stage. We're going to have to move up with Mohoric. Trying just to stay towards the front of this group. Who's going to take the stage victory up the road? Bilbao looking pretty good down the middle. Is he going to take it? I think it's going to Dillier who will... Oh my word, Bilbao does take it on the line. I thought Dillier had it from this angle. He takes the stage victory and we will finish in this group with the GC favourites, I think. 
the team get our stage victory then. You love to see it. Bilbao beating a pretty strong sprinter in Dillier. Pretty well-rounded rider, but Bilbao, pretty punchy for a climber. He gets the W. Very nice to see. There were some gaps further down. You can see crosswinds causing chaos in the end, but I don't think any of the main GC guys were affected. On we go then into the final stage of the race coming into Barcelona. It's of course that very short hilly circuit to finish. Need to make sure we stay well positioned and potentially we could attack the rest of the GC guys. Let's get into it. So we've got quite a few riders up the road and currently somewhere pacing pretty hard to bring them in. It's been a tough day for the breakaway so far. Um, I think this is them. As you can see, Izagire Yates is up the road. Valgren, the stage winner from the other day, Friday, pretty strong group. I'd quite like to keep them uh, in check as we are doing at the moment, just a one minute lead. Okay, we've reached the final circuit. Hinley did attack from somewhere. That was the reason they were pacing so hard. I'm gonna put these guys up to 90. Let's try and pace as hard as we can on these hilly sections now. Try and put the other GC guys in trouble if possible. As you see guys, 35k still to go in the stage. I think these are the only riders remaining from that breakaway. They've got no chance today. We are pacing so, so hard, at least to have a chance at the stage victory, if nothing else. Because to be honest, I don't think we'll be able to drop any of the GC guys on these climbs. But you can see already 66 riders in this group and it's only gonna come down from here. So still 23k to go in the stage and under 50 riders now in the group. Bilbao's done an absolutely exceptional job in today's stage as we go through this car. Unreal scenes right there. Three more climbs still to go. Uh, that sets a rapid pace now with Mate Mohoric. So Pale Bilbao is now done for the day. He has done a fantastic job for Lander in this one. Let's go up to 99 now with Mate Mohoric. 37 riders in this group. You can see the riders that are currently at the back. Uh, let's try and push some more out right now. So we've taken advantage of Mohoric's fantastic downhill right there and dropped seven more riders on that downhill section. Van Avmat, one of them as well. Look how small this group is. Very happy with how we've done on this stage so far. Again, let's push this up to 85. We're gonna go 99 and I may even try and attack this time around. So here we go guys, I think I may try it this time around. Mohoric, go up to 99, Ala Philippe, Bernal is right here, Martin is here. Mohoric pushing it as long as possible. Now Michael Lander on the attack, Ala Philippe, Garcia Cortina are the ones to follow at the moment. Doesn't look like Garcia Cortina can hold the wheel though, and it's Ala Philippe and Lander just off the front ahead of nine riders for the moment. We will uh, try and continue this effort with Ala Philippe. Uh, let's try and work with him on 85. He's sat on our wheel at the moment, but to be fair, I think this group of nine are going to come in. We will wait up because Mohoric is still in this group. Let's take our teammate's wheel, push him up to 84. Five riders behind. I don't see anyone in the GC. I think Haig is eighth. Uh, Bookman is further down. Emmanuel Bookman is behind, oh my word. I didn't see this one coming actually. Let's go again up to 99 with Mohoric. Let's try and attack again on this climb as soon as Mohoric is done. Ala Philippe looks to go on the attack as well. Let's try and come past him right now. Let's use our energy gel. Uh, let's go up to 85, maybe 90. Oh my word, Ala Philippe on the counter attack. We need to try and stay on the Frenchman's wheel. It's just three riders off the front of the race into the final 5k. Let's try and stay with the Frenchman. He's so, so strong though. It's Bernal, Alaphilippe and Landa in the front group. So you can see Pogachar and Lopez are further down. We know Bookman is further down as well. Let's try and cruise up to Alaphilippe's wheel. Into the final one and a half k. He sprints for it. I think he's gonna take the victory. He's just too strong in the sprints. I think we're gonna get third on the day. Ala Philippe with a fantastic stage win. These back markers getting in the way terribly. We take third place in the end. Dane Kolb, Garcia, Cortina come back. But we're gonna get a big, big gap back to the likes of Lopez and Pogacar further behind. What a ride by the team today. And you can see right here, Emmanuel Bookman finishing three minutes down on Ala Philippe. 
Look at this, guys. It was five riders in the end in the front group. Alaphilippe, Bernal, Landa, Dinkolb and Garcia Cortina came late. But one and a half minutes back to Lopez, back to Pogacar. I think Bookman in this group, two minutes and 50 seconds down. Oh my words, what a stage by us today. And if we look at the GC, we catapult into second position. Unbelievable final stage here. So Alaphilippe stayed in sixth despite winning the stage. He lost slightly too much time in the mountain stages. Bookman drops all the way from second to fifth. A disastrous final day for the German, but a fantastic day for Mikhail Lander jumping into second. Still two minutes down on Egan Bernal, who was fantastic this race. Bernal did take the sprint jersey as well, ahead of our former teammate Garcia Cortina. We took third place in that competition. You can see it was Jesus Harada taking the mountain jersey, and Bernal also won the white young riders jersey. So I must say guys, this was a fairly disappointing race up until that final stage seven, where the race absolutely erupted for us. We didn't quite have it on the two big mountains um, and that is because we're kind of trying to save our fitness now for the Giro, which is fine. Of course, that is priority, but we gained some massive time back on stage seven. Really, really good finish to the race. So if we look back at this March block of racing for us, wasn't too bad. I would have liked to win in here somewhere. Didn't take a stage win, but we finished second at Tirreno, second at the Volta Ciclista at Catalonia, fourth at Milan San Remo, very good result there, and of course sixth at Strada. So let's take a look at the new Super Prestige standings following Catalonia. We jump all the way to second place, only behind Thibaut Pino. What's he done this season? Let's take a look. He won the Tour Down Under, second at Paris Nice, second in UAE as well. Great season for him so far. And we're already doing a lot better in the team classification in the top five at the moment. And so looking ahead to next episodes, we do have a few weeks off after a very, very busy March period. Um, and then we go to the Tour of the Alps. Some very good stages in there. Will be interesting to see who we're up against as well. And then of course, following that race, we go straight into the Giro. And looking at our fitness, we're still looking pretty good. Um, I'm not sure why it's Zulia still here. Same with Amstel Gold, we're not doing those races. But anyhow, you can see we'll be in pretty good form for the Alps, 93% fitness. And then we'll go straight into the Giro at 97%, hopefully holding that 100% with our fitness peak into week three. But anyhow, guys, that'll round out this episode from me. I hope you enjoyed it as always. And if you did, do drop a like. That really helps the channel out. Subscribe to my channel as well if you're new. And I'll see you guys in the next one.